Well, that was different. Our uh, text for today is um, from Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 3. These words, your life is hidden with Christ. That will be our text. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I think this one hymn, Silent Night, probably brings back more wonderful memories than perhaps most others of family and and worship and church and Christmas lights and angels, trees, peace, calm, excitement. It's all there with this one beautiful, enduring picture of God as a baby with us in a manger. And I think that, for the most part, across the spectrum of Christianity for the past 200 years, we, we sing this, our favorite hymn, just once a year on that night. It's almost as if we save it for that night. And for the past seven years, uh, I and the pastors, we, we've, we've stood up here and we've faced the congregation during the singing of Silent Night on Christmas Eve with just some dim lighting and the glow of a few hundred candles. But do you know what I see as we sing? I see a lot of tears of joy, of memories. It's it's almost as if during those few moments in which we sing this hymn, it's like we're six years old again or 12, or newly married, or if we close our eyes, we can still hear the voices of our parents as they sing, or our grandparents, or our kids are still kids. It's almost as if in just this one hymn, it's like we're ushered into heaven where, where there is no more time and where everyone is there with you in that moment. And if that hymn is a favorite, it might be a favorite because of that. There would be anything more perfect than that. And it all started so very simply. It's Christmas Eve 204 years ago in this um, little sleepy German village in the France-Switzerland border in which this poem started off as a poem by a pastor was was given in a church called, and I kid you not, St. Nicholas Church. Pastor Joseph Moore was the pastor of this church. He had written this poem, and on the afternoon of December 24th, 1818, he gave this poem to his organist, Franz Gruber, not to be confused with Hans Gruber, the notorious villain from the Christmas movie Die Hard, played wonderfully by Alan Rickman. No, Franz Gruber was the organist. And he gave him this poem and he said, I I want you to compose some music for this for two solo voices in the choir um, by this evening. And he did. Franz Gruber, uh, in a very simple way, created a melody for Pastor Moore to sing the melody, uh, for himself to sing the harmony with some choir backup that was written for a guitar because the organ at St. Nicholas Church was broken in need of repair. So it, it, it almost seems so very perfect that this simple lullaby adoration of praise to a baby in a manger would be sung so very simply as we sing to him, sleep in heavenly peace. Because you could almost see it there, right? Mary and Joseph in a manger and shepherds and angels and wise men on their way. I mean, that's Christmas. It's Christmas. Over the past uh, 20 or 25 years or so, it has been our family tradition 
to, um, to queue up all the Christmas movies and TV shows um, and then watch them throughout the month of December. ALF, Christmas Vacation, The Polar Express, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. But it was seven years ago this year, my first year at Historic Trinity, that we're watching one of these movies and, and in the middle of the movie, boom, there it was, this moment of sure and pure shock, surprise, joy. I jumped up from my seat, I grabbed the remote, I slammed it in reverse, and I paused it because there he was, Kevin McAllister, home alone, running away from his home, from the comedic tandem of Daniel Stern and Joe Pesci as Harry and Marv, running from these two would-be bandits of the McAllister home. Now, Kevin, as you may recall, was left home alone on Christmas Eve as his parents traveled. These would-be bandits were chasing Kevin down the street when he ducked out in the church down the street. And he grabbed a, a blanket and he, he hid next to the baby Jesus. And as Harry and Marv went by, they looked into that nativity out in front of the church, that life-size nativity, and they saw this little bundle of presuming, I suppose, that he was some shepherd who came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. So they just kept going. But as they panned from the sanctuary down to the nativity, it's like I was looking at a store of Trinity. It's on the back of your cover. This is Trinity United Methodist Church in Wilmette, Illinois, where they shot this film. And this image of Kevin McAllister hiding with the baby Jesus, it's like a mirror image of historic Trinity. Down to the very signature of William Hunter, our architect, who had one of the turrets on the corners of the bell tower higher than the other three, which you see here too. Both of these sanctuaries, by the way, were dedicated in 1931. So now I'm thinking to myself, we need to put Kevin McAllister in our nativity, right here, our historic nativity, we'll wrap him up in a blanket and hide him next to the baby Jesus. Because is there ever a better place to be than hiding with Jesus, the rock of ages? Cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Our hiding place. There's some beautiful baptismal imagery there of, of the promises that God has given to us in baptism, right? That no matter what happens in life, no matter how painful it can become, we can hide ourselves with Jesus from it all. That no matter how far we fall short of the glory of God, and Lord knows it's hard for us to even stick the landing close to the glory of God, that no matter how much it just doesn't make sense what God is doing in the unfolding of our life, that no matter any of these things, that we have the promise that Christ is with us and that we can hide ourselves in Him. If we could just bottle that Christmas joy with the glow of candles as we sing and the warm memories. But alas, it's September, and the world keeps turning, and the days keep churning. And all you got to do is just look around, and you think, what happened to the world around us? Even here, home, right, the United States of America seems so much less united than it's been in such a long time. The hostility, and the division. It's palpable around us. One of our aspirations as a church here at Historic Trinity is to be a hiding place, a sanctuary from it all, from the hostility, the division, the hatred, a sanctuary for 172 years now through the worst our country has seen, through the Civil War, we stood tall. All the way through this worldwide pandemic, serving as a beacon of light to this ever darkening world around us. And if you haven't figured this out, 
we are a very diverse um, political congregation. We have fans of Hillary and Bernie and Donald and Joe. And for most of us, none of that really matters because we understand that in the grand scheme of eternity, those things don't matter in eternity. So we don't define ourselves or our friendships by politics. We define ourselves in the Lord. And so here at the Historic Trinity, you'll find young and old and black and white and rich and poor. It doesn't matter who you are, what you look like, where you're from. We love the Lord. And we love our neighbors as ourselves. Now, we're not perfect in our attempts. Nobody is. The world likes to point that out when we fall short of that glory. Nobody is. We're not perfect in our attempts, but we're forgiven on our knees. And that is what keeps us united and will continue to be that for as long as we can see fit. This is my prayer, my promise in this world that is in desperate need of this helping, heaping helping of heavenly peace. And if you're looking for a little sanctuary, hiding place, we'll be here. Loving the Lord and loving our neighbors and praying for peace. Where for a few stolen moments, here and there, we'll sing of those things, those joys places in our life and those memories where all is calm and all is bright, where we can hide ourselves in Jesus in heavenly peace. Amen. And may the peace of God, which is beyond our understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.